hi and welcome to my channel my name is francisca and in today's video we are going to be creating the turn up shorts with a bow for a belt can you see how beautiful our shorts is it's pretty right so we are going to be creating this in this video if you are new here welcome to my channel please click the subscribe button and click the bell so you get updates when i post new videos and if there is anything you need clarification on in the video let me know in the comment section and i'm going to respond as soon as i can so let's get right into our short tutorial so here is my shorts pattern with the turn up piece for both the front and the back i have this done in a previous tutorial if you've not seen how to make your shorts pattern with turn up piece I'm going to link that up in the description box if you have watched the pattern tutorial i added one inch ease to my back pattern at the hip and at the hem of the shorts and i told you guys that you should add it just in case you may need it or you may not need it for your shorts so what i did was that i tested my own pattern and i realized that my own shorts was a little loose and i didn't want it to be that loose so i took out my one inch of ease only at the hip and at the bottom of my shorts of course i also made the adjustment to my turn up uh, pattern as well just the side seam area that was the only place that we added the one inch ease i have cut my shorts pattern on fabric this is the front piece and i have two pieces right here i have cut the back pattern as well and this is what we have I also have two pieces i have also gone ahead to cut the turn up fabric and this is it guys this is the back right here and this is the front so i just labeled it side seam side seam in seam and in seam so i'll know how to position the fabrics on the shorts so here is my waistband i've gone ahead to cut it on fabric i have a tutorial on how to cut your curved waistband i'll link that up in the description box if you are not a fan of curved waistbands, you can go ahead and create a straight waistband and attach to the waist of your shorts. But I'm a curved waistband person. After cutting out all your patterns, your waistband, everything that you will need, do not be quick to throw away your scrap fabric because we are going to need it to create the belt holders or belt loops that we will be fixing on the shorts. So don't go ahead and throw it. You may not need this much though, but still don't throw it away just yet i have transferred my darts from my pattern paper to my fabric can you see i've transferred it so what i'm going to do next is to sew the darts on the two fabrics that we have here so i'll just go ahead and sew my darts i have sewn the darts for the front trouser fabric and the back and this is what i have what i'm going to show you next is how to attach the turn up so this is the front turn up fabric i'll just show you how to do it for just the front piece so i've marked the side seam on the fabric so that i don't mistakenly put the wrong side so i've marked the side seam here on both the fabrics both of them so i'm just going to place one of the front piece like this with the right side facing me can you see that so i have the side seam here or the out seam and then i have the in seam leg right here can you see that i'm just going to grab one of the pieces the turn up pieces where i marked the side seam can you see that this is what i have right here so what we are going to do now is to place the wrong side of the shorts we are going to place it on the right side of the turn up so can you see we'll place the wrong side of the bottom of the shorts on the right side of the turn up so can you see so both the shorts both the right side of the shorts and the right side of the turn up should face you this is the half an inch seam allowance i have at the turn up fabric and i have half an inch seam allowance at the bottom of my shorts check again to ensure that the side seam matches the side seam and then i'll place it on it like this ensuring that it is edge to edge and then i'm going to sew by a half an inch seam allowance so can you see that i'll sew by a half an inch seam allowance the reason why you need to do your placement of your shorts and your turn up fabric 
like this is so that after sewing you'll be able to get the right side of the turn up like this so can you see the turn up fabric will now be on the outside so that is why you need to you know you must make sure you do your placement like this so i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of my front short piece and the back pieces what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and sew the crotch of my shorts so i'll be sewing the front crotch from here now up to where my zipper fly ends this curve right here so i'll just go ahead and sew with a half an inch seam allowance to this point here then i'll go ahead and sew the crotch area for my back shorts as well so from here now all the way down like so with a half an inch seam allowance i have sewn the crotch of my front shorts and also for the back as well this is what i have can you see that this is the back crotch at this point what you want to do is to go ahead and overlock the raw edges of your fabric so you want to do this before you go ahead and fix your zipper fly so i'm going to take this to my machine overlock the raw edges separately not together i'll overlock it separately overlock the side seam of my shorts the inseam leg whatever i do for the front i'll just repeat the same thing for the back so once i do any overlocking that i need to do i'm going to go ahead and fix my front zipper fly i have a detailed tutorial on how you can do that i'll link that up in my description box so please go ahead and watch that so you'll be able to you know fix your own front zip fly i have sewn my front fly zipper this is it this is what i have let me show you the front this is how it looks in the front so i'll just open this up for you guys to see so this is what i have after stitching so can you see that the next thing i'm going to do now is to place the front shorts on top of each other with right side touching so that's what i'm going to do i'll place it on top of each other right side touching like this what i'm going to do now is to match the crotch of both the front and the back so i'll just go ahead and pin them down like so to ensure that the seams match i also need to make sure that the seam at where we have the turn up matches as well very very important so i'll pin that down do the same thing for this side i'll take it to my sewing machine sew this part with a half an inch seam allowance that's the crotch down to the bottom of the shorts this is called the inseam so i'll sew both sides by half an inch like so pin the out seam or the side seam and stitch with a half an inch seam allowance on both sides of the shorts so guys while you are sewing the side seam and the inseam leg as you are getting very very close to the joining of the shorts and the turn up fabric please kindly stop i loosened up the joining of the shorts and the turn up fabric by one inch on both sides so can you see that i loosened them up by one inch the reason why i did that is because i need to join the turn up fabric right sides touching each other so can you see that i need to join it right sides touching each other if you don't do this and you go ahead and sew straight down by the time you are turning your fabric you'll be finding let me use this pattern if you sew it straight down like this by the time you are turning your fabric to the outside you'll be seeing this raw edge so just do it like this as you're getting close, losing the joining between the shorts and the turn up fabric just about one inch, and then go ahead and sew the turn up fabric right here with a half an inch seam allowance. Stitch your shorts with a half an inch seam allowance. Just continue with your side seam stitch all the way down, continue with your inseam leg stitch all the way down and i'll show you how to close it up and then i'll show you how your shorts 
will look like by the time you are folding your fabric right sides you know out after stitching your turn up right sides touching each other like this can you see and then you've stitched your shorts right sides touching each other like this all the way up can you see so this is where the shorts ends what we are now going to do is to align them together like this so i'll just align them together like this i'll take it to my sewing machine and then stitch this part that we're losing the, the turn up fabric and the shorts stitch it up together so once you're done sewing up your shorts it should look like this so can you see can you see how it looks at the bottom so by the time you are turning it up like this can you see that the seam allowance is on the inside it's it will not show on the outside if you go ahead and do it with the way i explained the second option is that instead of you know attaching the turn up fabric to each of the trouser leg like we did and then i went ahead to sew the side seam what you will need to do is first of all sew your trouser up then what you will do is now sew the turn up fabric the front and the back sew it separately do you understand after you have sewn your shorts separately sewn the side seam of the turn up fabric separately you will now place them on top of each other and stitch at this part here this seam allowance part here do you understand if you do it that way this second method i'm explaining you are also going to achieve the same thing that we have done here at this point now what you need to do is to go ahead and test your shorts check the fitting if you need to do you know any extra adjustments go ahead and do that for me i think i'll just be taking a little at just my hip area and that's just it <laughs> Do you remember the fabric strips that I said you should not throw away in order to, you know, make your belt holders? Yeah. So I've gone ahead to cut those um, scrap fabric. I cut it into this fabric strip that you can see here. This fabric strip is measuring one and a half inches in width. Can you see that? I have one and a half inches here. So the reason why I cut this part like this is so that it will be able to you know pass through the bias tape so this bias tape that i have here is going to take my one and a half inch fabric so i pass it through the bias tape and as i was feeding it through the bias tape i was pressing the folds down it's very very important that you do that press the folds down as you are pulling it through the bias tape here are my pressed fabric strips so can you see that this is what i have now i'm going to be cutting these strips into about three three inches i'm not going to cut this just yet what i'm going to do is fold this fabric strip like this can you see so by the time you fold it like this and you measure this your belt strip should be about a quarter inch so can you see that about a quarter inch or a little more than that so i'll take this to my sewing machine now and then i'm going to sew the edges of this strip from top to bottom the two of them and then i'm going to also stitch on this folded part right here i have stitched my belt holders down on both sides so can you see that this is what i have for your belt holders you need a minimum of seven pieces of your strips don't go less than seven if not your belt will not sit well on your waist i want to fix my belt holders to the waist of my trouser before i'll be attaching the waistband so i made this belt holders three inches because my waistband width is two inches i've marked half an inch from the edge of my waistband here so on this line i'll just place quarter inch of my belt holder so i place it in the middle of the seam and then i'll go ahead and pin it down i'll attach the remaining belt holder to this dart that i have here the one i first attach is the center back one to the side seam 
and attach another one to the dart in front so i'll just go ahead and do that off camera i have attached all seven of my belt holders one two three four five six and seven so the next thing i'm going to do is to attach the waistband for my waistband i fused the fabric with fusible interfacing because i wanted it to be a little thicker so i fuse it with fusible interfacing i've gone ahead to you know stitch the front pieces to the back pieces and after stitching them together i went ahead to join both of them because one fabric will be on the inside the other one will be on the outside so this is what i have after stitching i trimmed off the rest of my zipper that i don't need i trimmed it off then i attached one part of the waistband like this so i will take it to my sewing machine and stitch it down with a half an inch seam allowance all around the back and the front i will just go ahead and stitch this up then after i've stitched it up what i will do is now fold this one in i'll just fold this one in like this can you see what i'm doing i'll fold it in fold this part in can you see the edge fold it in by a half an inch seam allowance to now close up the waistband so i'll do this for all around the waist of my trouser after stitching my waistband this is what i have for my shorts so this is what i have this is how it looks on the inside i've stitched it down really well the next thing we're going to do for our belt holders is for me to go ahead and fold the top with a quarter of an inch so can you see and then i will place it right at the top of the waistband like this and i'll go ahead and stitch the edge down that's very very important that's what i'm going to do so once i stitch this top in i just use the pin to hold it down once i stitch it up this is where my waistband ends by the time i lay the belt holder on the waistband like this there's going to be a little excess that will be resting on my shorts so this part that is resting on my shorts i'll go ahead and stitch it right on my shorts do we understand so i'll stitch this top that i've pinned lay the belt holder on the waistband it's going to have like an excess that will be resting on my shorts so the edge that is resting on my shorts I'll just go ahead and stitch that edge down. Do we understand that? So I'll take it to my sewing machine and do that for all the belt holders. After sewing my belt holders in, this is what I have. So everything has been stitched down really well, both at the top and at the bottom right here. I hope you guys can see the stitches that I made where I'm putting my fingers here and here. Now that I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and make the belt for this short. I have cut out the fabric that I'll be using for the belt for this short and it is measuring four and a half inches in width and the length is 67 inches i'm using 67 inches because i doubled my waist measurements my waist measurement is 33 33 times 2 that is 66 and then i added one inch to it which is for you know sewing the edges that is um 67 inches i hope we got that right so what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and fold my fabric like this so I folded two of them together. What I'm going to do now is to mark two inches like this. So I'll just mark two inches here. Can you see that? And then I'll just connect from this point to the end here. The next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and cut this out. The reason I'm doing this is so that by the time we sew this up and tie our belt, it will be looking very, very beautiful. So I'll just go ahead and cut this out. What I'm going to do is take this to my sewing machine, sew the edge like this with a half an inch seam allowance. 
Then I'm going to sew the length of the belt with a half an inch seam allowance throughout the entire belt. Then when I get here as well, I'll sew this end with a half an inch seam allowance. While I'm sewing, I'm going to make sure to leave like two inches in the middle of the belt. This will enable me to turn the belt, you know, to bring the right sides of the belt out. So I'm going to leave like a two inch opening while I'm stitching this belt down. I am done stitching the belt piece and here is my opening. So I'm going to turn it right sides out through this opening, bring everything out entirely. After turning it right sides out, this is what I have. So please make sure you go ahead and poke out the edges. If you don't do that, your belt is not going to come out really, really nice. So you want that pointed look on your belt. So go ahead and poke out the edge of the belt. Very, very important. So I'll just do that for mine. After I poked out the edges, I went ahead to press the belt down. So what I'm going to do right now is to take this to my sewing machine and stitch the opening just very, very close to the edge. If you don't want to do that, you can use your hand needle and then a thread to do like an invisible stitch inside to seal up this opening. So I'll just go ahead and do that for the belt piece. I ended up using an invisible stitch to seal up that opening. You can see the stitch right here. So that's the benefit of using an invisible stitch. If you want me to show you guys how to make an invisible stitch, let me know in the comment section and then I'll make a tutorial on that. So here is my belt all tied up as a bow at my waist area. That's why you need to do you know that cutting at the edge of your belt to give it this shape right here the last two things i need to do is to attach a hook and eye at the waistband of this belt that's what i'm going to do and then for the bottom what i did was to you know fold this my turn up fabric i folded it like this and this is what i have and then i pressed it down the other thing i did after that was to fold the edge of the turn up fabric by a half an inch so by the time i do that this is what i have so in order to you know hold your turn up fabric in place what you just need to do is to take your shot to your sewing machine and then stitch the seam down to the short so just stitch this part of the turn up fabric down to the shorts ensuring that your side seam is aligned do the same thing for this other side as well as the other short leg and then you are practically done with your shorts i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i hope now you can go on to make your own shorts with turn up and then a belt for a bow or a bow for a belt thank you for watching please if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and i'll be seeing you guys in my next video bye